Hello and welcome to the last part of the Dogleg Sloyd sheath series. Let's start out by marking how far all of the connection is gonna reach down on the Lesto sheath. It's important to protect the sheath part and the handle with some sandwich wrapper from the moisture of the leather. So in this series today, um, I'm gonna give you all the information that I've learned over years of making these sheaths. And it's a little bit of a longer part, but I really hope that I get you a very detailed view on all the different tools and all the parts that you need. And I try to keep it very simple on purpose. So there is no big investments in tools and um, such needed. I'm just using some masking tape here to hold the sandwich wrapper onto the Lester. Just wrap it around a couple times. As we're using a wet molding technique on the leather, it's important to also protect the knife entirely from the moisture, especially the blade and of course the wood of the handle. Furthermore, it's going to give us a little bit extra space on the fit, which is going to be very important for the knife to slide in and out of the sheath without too much hustle. As we're using traditionally several grooves to keep a tighter friction between the leather part and the Lester. I'm just marking two lines here about a centimeter apart where I'm gonna take this little round file now and you can use different types of files here. I just like using these little needle files and I just use my finger as a guide to establish a first little groove. Just make sure that you don't slip into the more exposed part of the sheet when you're peeling that. In this next part here, I'm using the needle file with more pressure laterally, side to side, to make the, um, the grooves a little bit wider and a little bit deeper with some sharp edges, which is gonna keep a tighter fit between the leather and the wooden lester. Now well, next up, slide the whole knife with the foil into the sheath. The fit is usually quite secure. And next up I'm going to show you here on my personal prototype Sloyd, dogleg Sloyd that I made in Japan from Sakura with a Nick Westerman blade, that there is the thickest and widest part of the handle that we need to find in order to make sure that there is going to be a snap fit. So from this point on, usually there's a little bit of decoration where I can just um, establish where exactly that is. I measure that exact distance. In our case, it was about 10 centimeters exactly. The leather we're going to be using for this project is Veg 10 5 ounce leather, which is about 2 millimeters thick. Now before I cut the piece of leather off that I'm going to be using for this project, I want to make sure that I have plenty of extra room wrapping the leather around the knife. And then some, because usually I'm just a little bit too greedy and I'm ending up with not enough leather. So just use a scratch all or a fork or anything, just scribe a line and then you can use your Sloyd knife or leather knife or even shears with this kind of leather to cut your work piece off. Next up I want to mark the leather with the 10 centimeters that I measured from the thickest part to the connection plus 2 centimeters that we're gonna need for the collar. At this point I'm gonna cut myself a little strap from the access material that we're gonna need a little bit later for measuring the leather around the knife. Next up I'm gonna show you how to do the fold over collar. Now I'm gonna mark two centimeters along the whole upper edge and I'm gonna use either a Sloyd knife or one of these Japanese leather knives to skive. Skiving means that I'm thinning out the leather at a very, very shallow angle towards the upper edge of the, the sheath. 
Now this is not necessary if you just wanna do a more simple sheath as you can just um, burnish the top part of um, the leather connection, but I just like doing this style. Fast forward, I just soaked the leather in some warm water for maybe 10 minutes and then dried it off with a towel and let it sit for about two or three hours. So in comes the high-tech leather craft tool, a butter knife. It's important that it's stainless, if it's silver um, it might leave marks, dark marks on the leather. And a fork comes in handy very much as well. Now you see, I just want to make sure that you guys don't have to invest in a bunch of leather tools for doing this project. I use the ruler and the rounded back edge of this butter knife here to um, crease a line where I want to fold over the leather on top. And you can see as I thinned it out quite a lot, this is actually folding over quite nicely. At this point I just wanted to make sure that the measurement is still right and we're good to go. So first I just fold it over with my fingers, but then a leather hammer, a little cobbler's hammer comes in very, very handy. And I use the round side parts of the handle of the butter knife to just press on and fold the leather part over. Now the collar is basically established. Measurements are all good and we're good to go. Now to the most mysterious part of making wet molded sheets, the measurement. So I just made a little mark at the middle of our leather and what I'm showing you here is the different parts of sheath and handle I want to measure around to um, ensure a secure fit. So I mark these parts on the side of my leather piece here, which is the widest, the end part of the handle and the different parts at the transition between the sheath and um, of course down where we did the grooves. So what I'm doing here is I take this little strap from before that is very important that you keep this one dry. Don't um, case that one because we want to have a measurement of the end result of the sheath. I wrap it tightly around the first measurement which is down where we filed the grooves in and then I just make marks with my fingernails. That mark is gonna be transitioned with the middle in line which is um, what I'm doing here, I just fold it over and make a little dot with my scratch all and I put that in line with the middle dot that I made before on our leather piece. Now my fingernail marks I just measure on both sides and then I make a little X over that measurement of my fingernail so I don't use the same one again. Now I go up just a tiny bit, the end of the sheath, and I do the same thing again. Mark with my fingernails after I wrapped it tightly. Bring it over to my workpiece, mark it, and erase the mark on my little leather strap. This was now the measurement of the very connection between my handle and the sheath. Now the widest part that's going to be important for the snap and the very top with the fold over collar, I do that with the piece of leather itself. Wrap it tightly, mark it with my fingernails. This is the most efficient way I figured out how to make these sheaths consistent. I used to just wrap the thing around and make marks with the thumb for the holes and stitch it right together, which is very, very hard on your hands. So with these marks in place, I'm just using a fork or a scratch all to connect these dots with the rounded line. So I have a guide for my hole markings. So usually I use Japanese pricking irons, but since you might not have these, you can just use a fork with rather um, close together prongs. Make sure that your measurement actually adds up so you don't have a half hole at the end. For punching the holes you can use a regular scratch all which is very inexpensive and comes in super handy. I'm using a Japanese diamond shaped awl that I sharpened up and I just make slanted holes which means about 30 degrees. In this case um, 
they are facing outwards 30 degrees towards the right and then I'm gonna do mirror image on the other side which is gonna be important for an aesthetic look of the stitching in the end make sure to do that on a scrap piece of leather as we've done a very decorated handle and sheath I decided to do some basic geometric decorations on this um, leather part as well this is not necessary of course but I just felt inspired to try something new I've never done this kind of decoration but I thought I'm never gonna figure out if I like it if I don't do it so no risk no fun let's do it just in a tutorial so first I just um, scribe a line with the collar and down at the end where the sheath connection is and now I just decided to go for a very unmeasured of course typical max woodsman's finest style I'm just gonna do parallel lines eye measurement best gauge I have personally and just continue this pattern up and down the sheath For the next step I'm using a molding tool which is a very ex inexpensive leather tool as well and I'm using this one on I don't know like uncountable projects it just gives me a little bit of a finer edge to just deepen the markings that I did with the back of the, the butter knife as the leather is slowly drying these markings gonna stay behind a little bit better than with the very wet cased leather so next up, we're going to use a 5mm leather punch to mark the holes for our strap that goes onto the back of the sheath to keep on your belt. I decided to go with a very simple design. By the way, here it's important that you're going to make three holes on each side and not two. I wanted to do a different design this time, but I ended up actually adding a third hole. So with this very simple tool here that you can actually also replace with just a knife, I am chamfering the edge of the leather that is connecting to the sheath because we can't work on this side later anymore. A couple passes with a piece of beeswax, a piece of canvas to rub it over and done is the burnish. This keeps your leather edge from getting damaged and moisture seeping in later. So here we go, first test fit, everything looks great and with a little bit of a pinch here I can get a very good idea about the actual fit on the sheath. Number two, John James harness needles and 0.7 millimeter um, leather thread in dark blue, of course, is gonna do the job just fine. Now I'm gonna measure the distance four times, which is gonna be about the length of the thread we're gonna need. And here we go, threading the needle. After that, I go back, go once through the thread, and this is gonna keep the thread on the needle very nicely during our stitching. Just a little life hack. Now something that's gonna make your life a lot easier. Just a couple of dots of super glue to tack the, um, the sheath top part at least in place it's gonna it's gonna make it so much easier to work on the stitching I've done this without gluing before but a little bit of a pain in the butt so I'm just putting a little bit of super glue into the top of the grooves press it on for a little bit and then I start with my fingers to just mold the leather tightly around the connection the leather is still cased at that point, quite soft, but definitely not as soft as what was in the beginning. The round butt end, by the way, of this butter knife here is just perfect, fitting into those grooves and actually leaving quite a nice burnish. What you're seeing here is traditionally the part that keeps the connection between the, um, the wooden lester and the leather very secure. Now to the stitching. Go through the first top hole from one side. There's gonna be two pieces of leather on both sides since we have the collar. And then loop it over just to make a very secure top and go through it a second time. You see the loop there? It's just gonna make sure that um, the sheath is nicely finished on top. After I go through the second part of the leather on one side, 
it's always important to pull the other side of the thread to make sure that you didn't pierce the thread with the needle. At this point, I'm gonna take my scratch awl that is round of course, and I'm just gonna widen the holes a tiny bit. Since we don't drill the holes, but we pierce them, especially with the Japanese awl, they tend to close up, which is really nice for later. But at this point, it's gonna make stitching a lot harder. So here we go. Enter from one side, go through to the other side. Now take the other side of the thread with the second needle and come from underneath. It's just a basic English saddle stitch we're doing here. Come from underneath and then go through the front lower part of the hole. This is how I established the holes on both sides, slanted upwards, so we're going through the lower part of the hole. When we enter through to the other side, you exit and you pull the other side of the thread to just make sure that we didn't go through the thread with the needle on the way back. And now we're just gonna repeat that. Pull it tight, not too tight, not to cut the leather, but tight. Go through, come from underneath, through the bottom of the hole, through to the other side, pull the other side of the thread to make sure we didn't pierce it. And there you go, pop and pull it tight. On the very last hole, we loop it over again, like we did on the top. And with my needle on my right hand side, I just gonna stitch one stitch back, one hole back. So the thread is gonna exit on the same side in the end. When I'm cutting off the thread or rather the needles off the thread, I'm just gonna make sure to leave a little bit of extra room to pull the stitch tight a little bit later. Now that the leather is a little bit um, drier than it was before, it's actually gonna mold a little bit more permanently. So I'm just going over the entire sheath once more and especially the parts that I hadn't done yet. Like what I'm doing here is the direct connection between the handle and the sheath which is always gonna make a very nice look to burnish that in and mold that in, very pronounced. This is also a good timing to get whatever logo you have, a little signature, your initial, something like that. Take the molding tool or any of the other tools we've been using before we starting out with a very important part, which is the gluing of the access leather. I just use some contact cement here or some leather glue usually. Just put it into the crease above the stitching and I'm using the butter knife here to just get it as deep as I can in there and I just wipe the rest onto about a centimeter and a half above. So here the professional way to clean off glue. Now to get a very tight fit here and let the glue dry, I first of all get rid of some excess leather uh, to leave about an inch or so. And the clamp I'm using here is from one of my archery fletching jigs, but you can also use any type of little clamps to do this. But this one fits the job perfectly. So I'm just trying to get this as low down to the stitching as possible. And I'm just gonna leave that whole package for about an hour. Now this is also some important drying time for the leather. So after I come back, I just gonna do the entire molding and burnishing part again, using the side of the handle here, just to burnish the leather onto the um, octagonal shape of my Lester a little bit. Now 
Next we're gonna take care of the belt strap. So I'm just using this piece of offcut to cut me about a 5mm wide strap. And I had another one from before and I case both of them. And start just twisting them a little bit and pull them a little bit to get some of that flexibility out of there. So in order to get the knife out, first I need to peel back a little bit of that sandwich wrapper. Use my pinky and press my thumbs together keeping the knife very close to my body and using my entire upper body and back so the knife doesn't fly out of the sheath cutting the leather. Here you can actually see that the collar molded very nicely. To put the strap in place I'm just going through the hole from the outside through up and back down into the sheath just so you can can't see the tip. Friction and the leather drying is going to be enough to keep that bell strap in there very securely. This is all you need to do. Now I'm going to show you something I call a Sami knot. I don't know if that's actually really precisely what it is, but I saw it first on Sami Puko, so I just call it the Sami knot. There's also a name in bushcraft for that, by the way. So you're going through that loop, that little eye that I cut there with the knife. Now you're going to wrap the end of the strap around the piece of leather on the opposite side and you go through the little loop that you created. Once the end comes through there all you need to do is pull the entire loop down into the eye and this thing is never gonna come apart once the strap dries. And that's it. A knot without a knot and it looks pretty cool. Now let's put the knife back into the sheath again for the final part of the drying. It's very important to have the knife in there so the leather is really conforming to the shape of the knife while it of course still has the sandwich wrapper on there. Now I pull the leather thread tight and I use a lighter in a downward angle to burn the ends and mushroom them out. So here is a pretty scary part that you should be going very slow on if you haven't done this before. This is where we trim the back of the stitch, the back seam, down to about four to five millimeters. Now we're gonna use our little chamfering tool or a sharp knife and we get rid of the edges, chamfer them, go over with some beeswax and we're repeating our burnishing steps. First with a wooden burnisher, some more wax and then really go hard with the canvas to seal those edges. gets me every single time how nice these collars are folding over. Very important for a snap fit. Usually I use this heavy duty LP by Obanoff, which is beeswax, a bunch of oils and propolis to finish most of my leather craft. I'm just wiping on quite a big amount of this stuff and then using this rag, which used to be a t-shirt, just to put a little bit of heat on that whole mixture so that it enters the leather a little bit deeper. It's very important if you have leather products that have oil and beeswax in it, that you keep going over it, keep polishing, so um, the heat is just transferring or transporting the beeswax deeper into the leather. I find that the final buff with a horsehair brush gets you the best results on the finish and sheen of your leather. Now if you unwrap the knife and you find a little bit of excess um, milk paint, that bled into the connection at the bolster. Just use one of those toothpicks to scratch that stuff off. If you've been bearing with me and building along, let me congratulate you. You just made your first dogleg Sloyd knife. I think it turned out very nicely. Let's check the fit here. I polished that knife a little bit, sharpened it. On some sandpaper I got from Hewn and Hone, my friend Nick Westerman. I'm very happy how this one turned out. 
Now you can of course dye the leather after the fact before you oil it, but I just wanted to go with the natural veg tan in contrast to the blue milk paint. Let's have a little check on the fit here. There you go. Let's make sure the knife is gonna stay securely in there. It's very safe that way. And it's a bunch of fun to make a snap fit. Just a word of caution before we call this one. Please always use the thumb press method when you unsheath the knife that I've been using throughout the video, just so you don't cut the leather. So this is a wrap. I'm really happy how this knife turned out. So I wanted to say thank you very much for everybody watching this eight part series about how to make your own dog leg sloyd knife. This has all been a huge challenge for me and I'm very happy, proud and quite relieved actually that um, this series is done. It was super important for me to wrap my head around making a video series like this. It's been a big challenge and a very demanding but also a very very rewarding one so at this point of the video i would like um everybody to just really consider all of these great makers out there who have been doing tutorials um, and how-to videos on youtube for such a long time it's a very big time demanding project if you want to do something like that yourself just to keep it in perspective the series has taken me about a hundred hours to produce from wrapping my head around what I want to do, the filming part, the editing, the exporting, and then of course the uploading and interlinking stuff. Um, making pictures, putting them on Instagram, trying to reach a bunch of people. And despite the fact that all of this is very rewarding, I'm also so grateful now for everybody out there who has been helping me on this journey. And so if you have somebody in your area who's doing a spoon carving course or a course about forging anything, go ahead and support those folks because it is just such a great service to all of us. So at this point of the video, I just wanted to point out that anything you see in this video, you can find first of all in my Amazon affiliate shops that I've set up for all kinds of different countries like the US, UK, Germany and Canada, and it's helping the channel a lot. And also please consider going on patreon.com, Patreon dot com forward slash woodsman's finest to support my channel and make it possible that i can keep doing these videos for you so thanks for watching folks i hope you're doing well wherever you are and i'm gonna come back to you with another one very soon cheers oh and by the way i actually make a living crafting stuff so if you're searching for an heirloom knife a nice belt wallet or anything from wood to put in your kitchen or your grandma's kitchen chances are i make it so Woodsman's Finest.com. Thanks a lot.